Hello there and welcome. I'm Lauren, one of the pastors at Prince of Peace. We're going to begin worship in just a few moments. In the meantime, I would invite you to invite a friend to join you in virtual worship. You can easily share this link. Whether you're worshiping at Church Online or at YouTube, invite a friend to join you this morning. We also would love for you to fill out a Connect card if you're new with us. If you're new to the Prince of Peace community and you're worshiping with us on our online church platform, you'll notice a button drop down there to fill out a Connect card. Take the time to fill that out. When you're finished, you'll come right back to this service. We're going to begin in just a few moments. We invite you into a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen.
Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him, when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring town, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. How did you get here? This is not an existential question, I promise. I simply want to know how you got to be here. I'm curious about the action of events that led you to where you are right now. You can begin with the moment you woke up this morning and the subsequent events that led you to this specific moment, sitting in front of a screen watching my face, or you can start even further back. What events since the very beginning of your life have led to this moment? You see, no matter how you choose to approach your answer, it will be grounded in a sense of beginning. Whether it be when your life began or simply your morning, there was a beginning that led to this moment. Time sprinkles beginnings all over our lives. From big moments like first days of school, to first dates, to first performances, and to wedding days, jobs, babies, trips, and retirement, beginnings can be so very public and very happy. And beginnings can also be smaller and more solemn. They can be first days sober, first days after the death of someone we love, or first days at school after a friend moves away. Beginnings come in all shapes and sizes. While beginnings look differently from one another, all beginnings usher with them change. When I was 12, my family moved houses, and, about, and at about the same time, we became members at a new church. Now, there are a lot of changes, a lot of endings and beginnings that go along with being 12, naturally. Needless to say, I wasn't pleased about my parents' decision to add even more beginnings to my already heavily laden load. I was devastated. We were moving from a house where I learned all the best hiding spots, from neighborhood kids with whom I shared countless summer nights, and from the only church I had ever known. There were a lot of scary beginnings in my life at that time, and I didn't understand why change had, to in, had infiltrated my world. Beginnings mark the start of something different. Beginnings are built on the ending of the way things were. Even if we had moved back into my childhood home, we could never take back what, that we had moved. Even if I miraculously shrunk, 
my shins would never unexperience my growth spurt. Beginnings bring about a strange and elusive sense of finality, and finality in any sense can be scary. The unknown can be scary, and beginnings always hold some level of the final and some bits of the unknown. This is why beginnings can feel so daunting. There's so much emotion wrapped up into this moment. We put so much pressure on these moments and so much weight. We can trick our brains into thinking that change could only ever be something to fear. But even our beginnings have their own kind of beginnings. My parents at some point had the first conversation. They began the math. One bathroom, four girls, this may not be in our best interest. Somewhere in my body, cells began the process of duplicating faster, adding height bit by bit. Our beginnings have to begin. What we set into motion can turn conversations into houses in size six shoes to size tens, albeit I really couldn't control that one. But no matter the magnitude of the outcome, it starts small. It starts with one action. It can even start with one person. In today's gospel, Jesus shows us the power of a small beginning. We are reading from the book of Mark, and Mark is, pretty, is a pretty succinct guy. This is our shortest gospel account of Jesus' life and ministry, and we are still in the very beginnings of this ministry. You might recall hearing about Jesus' brawl with an unclean spirit. Well, according to Mark, as soon as they left the synagogue where the man with the newly clean spirit was hanging out, they went to Simon and Andrew's house. These were some of Jesus' shiny new disciples, fresh from the fishing boats. And Simon's mother-in-law was sick with fever. So Jesus took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left. And she began to do what a woman of Galilee at the time did best. She extended hospitality to the stranger in her home. She took back her role in the house and in society. She began her work of welcoming and feeding and cleaning. The hands of Jesus took her from the verge of death to the fullness of life. This one woman's encounter with Jesus changed all of Capernaum. That evening, Mark says, all who were sick or possessed with demons came to Jesus. All, not most, not many, not the majority, but all came. And this woman, she's just one person, just one. We know that while Jesus walked on earth, he performed a number of miracles. He fed thousands, he healed thousands. And we also know he died on the cross to save all, all. But to get to all, he began with one. This one woman was the beginning of Jesus' healing of many in Capernaum. And from Capernaum, he went from town to village, all the way to Jerusalem, all the way to the cross. For Jesus' ministry to begin, for it to have been a beginning, a moment that invited people to him, it had to do just that. It had to begin. Often beginnings lay before us, waiting for us to take that first step, waiting for us to begin. But how can we? How can we know what is the right step? We're not Jesus. We are bound to sin and know all too well how easy it is to misstep. Why should we dare try something new? Why would we try to change something about the way things have been? We could fail. We could hurt others. We could lose. Why should you even take that first step? So why are you here? What led you to this worship, to this word at this moment? This could be a total flop. It could be a waste of your time. You could hear something that challenges you to start your own beginning, or you could hear something that makes you angry. So why are you here? Why did you choose this? We gather here in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the power of God's will for our lives together, the will that they be just that, together. Together we are the body of Christ, built with love, seeking peace and loving hard. Together we love hard and we love especially when it's hard. Together we seek God's word in our lives, 
We seek forgiveness together as we confess our sins. The words of the Lord's Prayer gather Christians from around the world together into one being. We gather to share in the sacraments where God promises grace upon grace. We gather to hear Jesus' love proclaimed through music, readings, and preaching. We gather to respond to God's love with our praise and our offering. And this gathering began with each one of us. It began with one, but look at what God can do with just one. One really is just the beginning. We have gathered through time and space and internet. It began with you. God called you to begin your ministry in the waters of baptism. Your ministry, in my ministry, in their ministry. In God, it is our ministry carried out in the name of Jesus, in the name of the one who began it all. When Jesus began his ministry, he began a witness to a love that was more powerful than unclean spirits and fever and even death. Jesus invites us to consider the impact of beginning, of taking that first step. And these gospel stories, these accounts of Jesus' ministry and death and ultimately resurrection say, you do not begin alone. Let Jesus' ways of beginnings, of new life, of resurrection promise be your guide. Begin with courage, though you may not know where you are going, though we may not know where we are going. We go with courage, trusting that God's love revealed in Jesus Christ goes with us. Jesus had begun, and there was no stopping. After the one woman, there were the many, and then everyone was looking for Jesus. And just at that moment, when everyone was searching, Jesus knew it was time for yet another beginning. He left the place where he had been to go somewhere new. He left to begin his ministry elsewhere and everywhere. We have to begin, and we begin with prayer and reflection, seeking together God's word in our lives, gathering to share in the sacraments, gathering to hear Jesus proclaimed, gathering to lean into our togetherness with love and humility. This is where we begin, and it is just the beginning. God's beloved people made radiant by the light of Christ. 
Let us pray for the church, the whole human family, and God's good creation. When your church grows weary and weak, give courage to our leaders and strengthen your people for service. In these pandemic months, bring hope to struggling congregations. Grace all who search for you with the blessings of the gospel. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Where the earth is exhausted by our demands and the waters polluted with our waste, bring rest to creation and restore the health of your creatures. Provide relief from harsh weather to people and animals and help us to see the beauty of our surroundings even in these cloudy, muddy days. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. When war and violence threaten innocent lives and displaced peoples live in search of shelter, renew the strength of peacemakers and humanitarians and humanitarian aid workers. Raise up leaders who value justice more than power. Raise up advocates for the overlooked and marginalized. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Where the brokenhearted and powerless cry out for relief, lift them to new hope. Be light in the darkness for all weary and wounded people. Give endurance to those whose struggle is unrelenting and relieve the pain of the addicted, the homeless, the unemployed. Sustain the suffering, bring renewed energy to the healthcare workers and comfort the grieving. Hear now our individual prayers, whether spoken aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. When we are frantic and troubled, lead us into quiet places of prayer that restored by your peace, we gladly serve you and our neighbors in our daily lives. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Unsearchable God, you are always more than we can understand or imagine. Guide us throughout our lives to follow in faith where the saints have led, and keep us mindful of the covenant you made with us in the waters of our baptism. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Compassionate God, we lift these prayers before you, trusting that you're a God of grace and mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you now to share a sign of peace. If you're worshiping online, wish one another peace in our chat feature. If you're at home worshiping with others, extend a sign of God's peace. This is a time in our worship service where we worship God through the act of offering offering our resources to God for the work of God's mission in the world. We encourage you to make a donation, to sacrificially give so that others may have abundant life. Together, when we pool our resources for God's ministry, we know that we can make a great impact here locally in Loveland, throughout greater Cincinnati, and around the world with our partners in Haiti and beyond. Thank you for your generosity. If you're worshiping with us online, you'll notice a donate button will appear in the chat. You can also always visit our website, popluther.org, to make a gift there. Thank you once again for worshiping God through the act of offering. In just a few moments, we will receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God's gift to us, God's free and abundant gift. Take this time now to set a table wine or grape juice, crackers or bread, so that we can celebrate in the Feast of Grace together.
Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and your might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and his healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again. We await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless us and this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. United by the Spirit, we boldly pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We invite you now to share communion wherever you are gathered, using the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
we have a few really important announcements this week that we're excited about. Ash Wednesday is on February 17th, right around the corner. You can come on that day to receive the imposition of ashes in a very safe way. We're going to be offering ashes from 8 to 8.30 in the morning, and again from 5 to 6 p.m. You'll drive in to our parking lot in your car, and you'll stay in your car. We ask that you do wear a facial covering, and we will be doing so as well. We'll apply those ashes to your forehead with a Q-tip, so that we're not making any personal contact between bodies. We do want to celebrate and mark this occasion, this very important day in the church year that begins for us the season of Lent. So on February 17th, we invite you to come out from 8 to 8.30 or 5 to 6 p.m. to receive those ashes. We're also going to be live streaming two different worship services for online worship on Ash Wednesday at 12 noon and again at 7 p.m. So we hope that you'll tune in to one of those services as we enter into these great 40 days of prayer and fasting. During Lent, we are once again going on a journey together, and this year's journey is titled Ears to Hear, a journey of deeper listening. We're going to be exploring the ways in which we encounter so many voices, so many thoughts that compete for our attention, and sometimes those thoughts and voices drown out the voice of God. This Lent, we're going on a journey to hear once again the voice of God, which offers us new life, hope, and joy. We hope that you'll engage in the journey this year, and you can find more information about that at our website, popluther.org journey. And finally, we're really excited to announce a return to indoor worship beginning the first Sunday in Lent, February 21st. We'll have all the safety protocol in place and we'll have limited spots available to worship. You'll have to reserve a spot in advance, but we are excited to begin worshiping again indoors together. Our service times that weekend will shift to Sunday morning at 8.30, a more traditional blended type of service, and again, another service at 1030, our contemporary worship offering. For those of you that wanna continue worshiping online, we will be live streaming the 1030 service to our usual platforms. So that is an important thing to keep in mind. On February 21st, if you've been worshiping online and want to continue worshiping online, the time will shift by a half hour from 10 o'clock to 1030. You can find more information on our website and more details will follow about our safe return to indoor worship. However you worship, whether online or in person in the days to come, may you be filled with God's hope, God's peace, and God's love. And as we're sent out in mission to live in love like Jesus this week, may you receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you, May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace to live in love like Jesus. Thanks be to God. Uh -huh.